Drugs and sport, two words that shouldn't go together, but too often do, although rarely to this scale. Allegations the AFL for years authorised secret drug tests and helped players evade detection on game day. Even more shocking, the AFL's response. It's not sorry. AFL legend and former Collingwood coach Mick Malthouse and another legend, Essendon great Matthew Lloyd, join me. Really appreciate your time tonight, gentlemen. Mick, I know you're well and truly fired up on this. What damage does it do to the game? I, I, I'm staggered. I, I'm really... I, I'm, I'm so disappointed. Cause this, is, this is a great game. This is a game that should go forward, not backwards. I, I am very, very charged up about this because... The responsibility as a football coach is not just a player running down the race. It's far greater. You owe it to the supporters, you owe it to the club, you owe it to that young man running down the race, and you owe it to their, their parents that you look after that player as best you possibly can to ensure that he goes forward, not backwards. Personally, I, I, I reckon that there's going to be a lot of sponsorship that will be in question. I really think that a lot of people will be sitting back saying, well, this is not a good image. And if they're fed ink of some of these sponsors, I'll be looking at that thinking our product and AFL don't mix. So this, this I, might, I, might be just, I might be just a 70 year old uh, dinosaur, but there's a lot of 70 year old dinosaurs out there that watch the game. The people I've spoken to and, and others that have, have rung in and I've listened on TV, et cetera, they feel as if they've been cheated because what they want is a, a transparency that sees their side run down the race, play the best football they possibly can and uh, win, lose or draw, OK, they can lick their wounds. But when you don't know why players aren't playing, and we've now found out that some have pulled out because of certain reasons, uh, I think they feel as if it's, they've been shortchanged. Well, this is the problem, isn't it? It puts pretty much every player under a cloud. And to have AFL CEO Andrew Dillon come out today and be unapologetic for the policy, I mean, I think that was almost more of a bombshell than the allegation itself. Well, that, that's a kick in the teeth, more so than, than the bombshell itself, because we, we, will, we will place every player now under, under the microscope because we now won't know why he's missing. I just can't, from my own mind, come to grips that... All club doctors are part of it. The AFL hierarchy have been part of it. Coaches, certainly, uh, the, the ones I've spoken to, we are left in the dark. And if I can just say, Ellie, one of the principal things about a coach is that young kid comes in at 18 years of age. Your responsibility is for his health and development. Whether he lasts one year or lasts 15 years, you want to make sure that player leaves the club better equipped for life, learnt a lot of lessons, uh, is appreciative of the club and what people have been able to do for him. To not know about some of these issues is damning on my part as a coach because I would like to help that player. Mm. We don't know about it and the loved ones don't know about it. So how can you... How, is this just a, a, a clean-up, get the player back playing as, as quick as we can or are we doing something about the illicit drug-taking of that player and can we do something about it to make him realise he's... Um, that there are avenues to be better. So it, it, the, the, it just layer after layer after layer has been damaged as far as I'm concerned. And that's it. And just to sort of explain what can happen here, effectively, say a player has um, a big Tuesday night, goes to the team doctor the next day, a secret drug test comes back positive. So the doctor then goes to someone like yourself, the coach, and comes up with an excuse why so-and-so can't play this weekend, he's hurt his hamstring or he's got issues with his mental health. And you're saying this is not something you were ever aware of when you were coaching Collingwood? I, I could categorise, hand on heart, say that I... Well, I've got to now sort of question myself that I knew why every player missed a game of football. So is the code failing players right now? Ellie, I, I, I'm, I'm very harsh on this. I, things are illegal, they're illegal. I have... I have a, 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 it's, and this might be impractical. My first thing is, if a player reports and the doctor reports that he's been um, on drugs of any description, illegal drugs, then, we, then the player is suspended immediately and goes into rehab until such time as we can help that player overcome 
going and having a night out, as we call it. No, we don't. It's illegal. It's not a beer. It's not a cigarette. It's, a, it's an illegal substance. Second time, he's out, for, he's out for a couple of years. Make no mistake about it. Third time, he's banned. Unless you make it a heavy-handed penalty, we're always going to have a little slap on the wrist. And players right now, I reckon they'd be all going, wow, you know what? I can get away with, I can get away with a lot of things after li listening to Andrew Dillon. Because I can be back in a week's time after a good night out. Yep. I'm saying you've got to be a lot harsher and the penalties are, are graver and it makes people think twice. And, and, and it cleans up the game and I'm sure that the public would rather have something like that than something that's wishy-washy like it is. Yeah. Well, Matthew, as you heard there, Mick doesn't mince his words. You played until 2009. Did you know this was going on and what do you think of it? No, I wasn't aware of this, Ali, and I know uh, since 2009 we'd go out and have plenty of uh, alcoholic drinks, but drugs weren't really an issue at that time. But since then, I think players are so concerned about their skin folds in the AFL society and putting on weight that they have turned to drugs. But that's a society thing as well. You know, drugs are the biggest problem currently in the AFL game. Uh, everyone who you speak to in a club land wants to say that drugs are the biggest problem. So I'm with Mick. We need to be far stronger uh, the players are earning half a million dollars each on average. Some players earning 1.2, 1.3 million. So they've got plenty of money. Uh, they've got plenty of people who are hanging around them and the repercussions just aren't strong enough. I know that the AFL may feel that it's about, you know, supporting the player and rehabilitating the player. But is it also about the brand damage of the AFL? Is it that it's better this way because it protects the AFL's brand without having players testing positive. I think it's a combination of that as well. Well, speaking to several team doctors today who say that this isn't something that um, just one or two clubs are guilty of. It's widespread and that's because it is within the rules. Where you had someone like Mick saying when you take a zero um, tolerance approach to drugs, we are talking about young people and young people do make mistakes, but it feels like the flags are so far apart right now. And the message from the AFL is, Drugs are OK as long as it's not game day. Yeah, well, Joel Smith, a uh, player for Melbourne, got caught game day and his career's over, you, you would think, you know, at, at this stage. So, uh, But in terms of what Mick, Mick touched on, I think, yeah, players, you know, once they, they are, uh, get their first strike, only the club doctor and the AFL medical officer knows about it. And it's pretty much, if you test positive again, you can just say, yeah, I'm having a difficult time. Uh, and, and really, you can't, apart from one, in, one time in the AFL history, uh, Travis Tuck was tested positive three times. We've never had anyone get close, and we know of a lot of players who've had drug problems in their time. And again, you know, you're really well protected as an AFL footballer when you're playing. Once your career's over, the day you walk out of that club, you're on your own. And I'm not sure this is really helping guys for when their career comes to an end, when they're in the real world with what the current, current policy is. So, yes, it does help them and, and rehabilitate them, but I think not having any repercussions is going to hurt them in the long run. Well, secrecy is really good. And, look, we probably didn't think we'd have a greater drug scandal in the sport than the one at your old club, Essendon. Is this worse? The Essendon players were let down by their football club. Uh, they believed what they were doing was legal. Uh, in this situation, I think the players realise just, you know, what's the issue? I can just go out and I'm not going to have an issue with this, but it's going to affect them long term. As we've seen some players who their lives are an absolute mess mm. once they've left the game because, you know, drugs have got a hold of them when they're outside of the AFL umbrella. So, yeah, I think we need to be stronger. Did you take much confidence from the Code's response today? Uh, I believe that, um, you know, Confidence. I did hear uh, Andrew Dillon say we will make look at making some changes. So while they've said they knew about it, which shocks me as much as Mick, I think strong. I think there would be a far stronger policy uh, from this po part a point on after what we've heard over the last 24 hours. Surely there needs to be some sort of investigation from this point, and it can't involve a the AFL. Does ASADA get involved, Australia's anti-doping authority? I think it's just our policy, Ali, that needs to be changed and, and changed. The sooner it gets changed, the better. If you're going to have an investigation, it's got to come from outside, it's got to be completely independent and have full resources to be able to go through the AFL and point out what has taken place and who's at fault. Because there is, there is fault at this. There is an absolute fault. The AFL would... The best form of defence come out swinging. That's what the AFL have done.
Make no mistake about it. Well, that's it, right? Next time our favourite player misses a game, mm. we're all going to be suspicious. Is it injury mm. or did they go out on a Tuesday night? It puts everyone under a cloud. Mm. Well, look, I mean, it's a huge problem in the AFL... I think is failing in its duty of care to the players. No one from the AFL was available to us for interview, but this isn't going to go away for them. Appreciate your time, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie.